Hey guys, this is Vadim with MaxTech and we finally got in our Logitech Folio Touch keyboard case with the trackpad, the one that everybody's been waiting for. And right next to it, I have the Magic Keyboard case right here. So in this video, we're gonna be doing a comparison, comparing everything from the keyboards, the trackpads, the design, the feel, the weight, the thickness, basically everything between these two to find out if it's worth spending the extra money because the Folio Touch costs $160 compared to $300. Now that is a massive difference in price. So let's see. All right, I'm gonna unplug this, set this aside, and let's unbox this. All right, so here we go. This is a very thick case, let me tell you that. Get rid of that. All right, so one thing, this flap wasn't really visible on the product images. They kind of chose to hide it, but yeah, I don't really mind. Opening this up, we can see that we have our layout. So this bottom keyboard portion feels basically identical to the combo touch for the iPad and for the iPad Air. I kind of feel like literally nothing is unchanged on this bottom portion, but right here where it connects, it's actually permanently attached because the smart connector location, of course, on the iPad is on the back right here. So we have our little pogo connectors. And of course we have the speaker cutouts on both sides, and yeah, there we go. We have our 2020 iPad Pro square camera bump right there. So what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna take off the iPad off the Magic Keyboard, and let's just compare these two without the iPad inside. So, side by side, you guys can tell that the difference in thickness is massive for just the case by itself. Like, that is insane. Like, when you look at the Magic Keyboard, it definitely looks really nice compared to this guy. Now, as far as the weight, everybody complains about the weight of the Magic Keyboard case, but right here, feeling them in my hands, I actually think the Logitech weighs quite a bit more than the Magic Keyboard. Of course, look how bulky it is. Now, what I'm gonna do next is compare the ease of basically placing the iPad in the case. So, got the 2020 iPad Pro right here. Just like that, it's on, nice and simple, and Let's grab the 2018 model. Looks like you kind of slide it in the bottom half, remove this flap and just push it in. As far as I know, that should be it. Sweet, so that was pretty simple. Now, comparing the hinge. So this hinge has a little bottom flap, just like on the combo touch. Basically, you just adjust it like this. And the nice thing is that you have a lot of angle adjustability. I don't know if you guys can see that right there, but a lot of angle adjustability, so you can lay it down like that, but you can't really make it face down like that, where if you look here, you could actually make the Magic Keyboard face down this way. You can't do that on the Logitech. Now, of course, on the Magic Keyboard, you just use, you could do it with one hand, better to hold, but you just kinda adjust it like that. And as far as the angle, definitely you can have a much bigger angle adjustability on the Logitech. Of course, a major perk of the Magic Keyboard is you could simply lift off the iPad Pro, put it back on like that. To get this thing out, it's gonna be a pain compared to the Magic Keyboard, like you gotta pull this off and yeah, it's not gonna be fun. Now the biggest perk for the Logitech Folio Touch is you could actually grab the keyboard and just flip it over like that. Boom, you have media viewing mode, YouTube, movies, whatever, just, just like that, it's perfect. You can't do that with the Magic Keyboard case at all. You have to lift the iPad off to be able to use it like that. And if you fold down the flap, there you go. You'll be able to use the Apple Pencil. So this is gonna be huge for anybody doing drawing or note taking. It's definitely a big perk for the Logitech. However, if you have a very small desk, the Logitech has to have this flap hanging out and acting as a kickstand. With a Magic Keyboard case, you don't have to have that. You can literally have it up against the edge of the desk and you'll be totally fine. With that, you can't do that with the Logitech, so that's a perk for the Magic Keyboard. Before we move any further, I wanna close these down and just compare the overall thickness with the keyboard cases. So I've got them side to side here and you can easily tell how much thicker the Logitech Folio Touch is, especially because of the added kickstand and the extra thickness of the keyboard portion and basically all around much thicker than the Magic Keyboard case. But with the Magic Keyboard case, the sides and basically all around of the iPad are exposed compared to the Logitech Folio Touch where basically everything's wrapped around and like you got a good thick bumper here all the way around. So if you drop 
your iPad Pro with the Logitech Folio Touch, I don't think anything's gonna happen to it, honestly. Like, this is gonna protect it very well. Whereas with the Magic Keyboard case, there's a very good chance that you're gonna scuff up the sides of your metal iPad Pro. Now, before I get into comparing the materials between these two, I wanna mention that we have our premium Apple product t-shirt design right below in our merch shelf. All right, so the Magic Keyboard case has this rubbery texture where like, I'm rubbing my finger against it and there's a lot of resistance. So if it's on a desk, like the whole desk is moving when I'm shaking this compared to the Logitech, like it slides around very easily because this is like a kind of like a plasticky, almost like fiber feeling material. It's actually kind of nice, almost like denim. So I really like this material and I think in terms of the finish, the Logitech is gonna last a lot longer without getting scuffed up because I already have like this little scuff. I don't know how I got it on the Magic Keyboard case. So you might see little uh, lines here, little scratches. So that's already from not that much use and you see a little bit of shiny spots. So the finish is definitely not gonna last very long. It's gonna change over time compared to Logitech. This is very solid and it feels pretty good too. Now, one of the downsides I'm seeing with the Logitech Folio Touch is that the buttons are kind of hard to press because you have the bumper around the buttons. You really have to push quite a bit harder to hit these buttons compared to the Magic Keyboard case. Of course, they're fully exposed, very nice and clicky, obviously. So that's one difference. Now, as far as how easy they are to open, let's test out the uh, Logitech, kind of just put it up on its hinge. Then you pull the flap back, the kickstand, and there you go, you're good to go. With the Magic Keyboard case, you basically place it on the hinge and you drop the keyboard portion down. So definitely more convenient with the Magic Keyboard case, I'd say. One thing I really like about the Magic Keyboard case is that because of this unique floating hinge design where the iPad is kind of lifted up, it's easier to go from typing to touching the display compared to with the Logitech, you kind of have to I guess put your fingers back further to access the display. You almost have to like stretch your hand out further. Compared to this, it's a little bit more convenient on the Magic Keyboard. Now I do like how Logitech dealt with the Apple Pencil. Basically, you just grab your Apple Pencil, you have this cutout, and there you go. It starts recharging and you just fold the flap over when it's not in use. And I'd say that it's definitely the, the more safe option. And it's kind of funny though, I've flip this flap over and this is kind of like sideways. It's not perfectly flat for some reason. But this is definitely the more safe option if you don't want to lose your Apple Pencil because it's it's holding it there compared to with the Magic Keyboard. If anything happens, if anything knocks it off, you could very easily lose it. As far as lapability, I think the Magic Keyboard case is gonna win because you don't have to deal with having this kickstand on your lap in it extends further out, so it's not gonna be very convenient. The Magic Keyboard case, basically it's holding all the weight off of the base of the keyboard, so this is definitely the better option for lapability. Now I wanna move into the keyboards and the trackpads. Now there's one reason why these two keyboard cases are the best on the market for the iPad Pro, and that is the Smart Connector. Basically, every other keyboard case does not have access to it. It's only Apple and Logitech that has access, and I think this is the only one for the new iPad Pro. Now, the major advantage is that the keyboard and the trackpad is hardwired to the iPad Pro, so when you're typing, you get no lag, no Bluetooth issues, no Bluetooth connecting. As soon as you put the case on, it's instantly connected and everything works from the keyboard to the trackpad, and it's a perfect experience, no lag, incredibly smooth. That's the major benefit with the Smart Connector. And that's why I will always recommend one of these two over the Bridge Pro Plus, which uses Bluetooth, and it also requires batteries being built into it that you do need to recharge. With these, you don't need any of that. Now let's get into comparing the keyboards. So as far as the typing, this feels kind of like a traditional chiclet keys, they actually feel pretty nice. But I personally really like the keyboard on the Magic Keyboard case. It has more, I guess, feedback, more click to it compared to a sort of dull feeling on the Logitech. So as far as the keys themselves, I'm definitely gonna give it to the Magic Keyboard case. The major benefit for the Logitech Folio Touch is that it actually gets a top row of function keys 
which you do not get on the Magic Keyboard case. I think that's the main reason why people choose not to get it. So let's quickly go through that. You have the escape key right there in the corner. You have brightness keys, just like that. You have your on-screen keyboard. You have your Safari spotlight search, just like that. And you have backlit key controls. Now, for some reason, I don't know why, they're not working. It's really weird, but I actually went into, let me show you, the Logitech control app. And I don't have any controls for that for some reason. And it says I am up to date. So I'm really not sure why it's not working. And I just took out the keyboard case, put it back in just to double check. It's still not working. So I don't know what's going on with that. But moving on, we have our media keys. We have uh, go back a track, you got skip forward, you have pause play, you have your volume keys. This is very, very convenient compared to the Magic Keyboard. You kind of go up there into the control center and you can kind of control everything just like that. So based on two things, the function keys and the price, this Logitech is a killer deal, especially since you get the smart connector instead of Bluetooth. Now, as far as that backlighting that I previously mentioned, it works perfectly on the Magic Keyboard case. It's automatic. Basically, when it becomes dark in your room, the backlighting turns on and it gets brighter. So you basically never have to touch any backlighting controls. It just works automatically. And I find that it's always at the perfect level, which is awesome. Now I want to move down to the track pads. And this is where there is a pretty significant difference. First of all, the trackpad on the Logitech looks bigger. So if I put them side by side, you can see that the surface area of the Magic Keyboard's trackpad is actually smaller. It is a little bit wider, but it's significantly thinner. Now you might be asking, how is the trackpad slimmer on the Magic Keyboard if there's no top row of function keys? Well, because of this floating design, Apple couldn't put extra keys up here near the top because then you'd be reaching your fingers under the iPad Pro and it just wouldn't be very convenient. So that's why. And if you look at the X-ray of the Magic Keyboard, you'll see that there's quite a bit of wiring and there's a circuit board there and it actually is there to control a very important feature that I'm gonna get into in just a moment. Now back to the trackpads, let's compare the feel. Now the biggest downside for the Logitech is that it uses a diving board design, which means it's connected here at the top of the trackpad. So, if you try to click it up here, you literally can't. I'm like pushing down pretty hard and it's not clicking. Now, as you go down further, now you can start to click. And at the very bottom, it's very, very easy to click. Now it's totally different on the Magic Keyboard because Apple designed a really unique design. You guys can see right here that they have this weird floating design of the trackpad where anywhere that you press down, any corner at the top, bottom, middle, it feels the same. You have an even clicking feel just like you get with the MacBooks. As far as how they feel, they both use a little glass panel, so they both feel incredibly smooth. And swiping left and right, it's actually not perfect on the Logitech. Sometimes it skips over. I'm not sure why it does that. Let's test the Magic Keyboard. All right, so the Magic Keyboard, I don't know why or how, but every swipe on the home screen is registering perfectly. Now I just did it on the Logitech and it's skipping. It skips, look at that, it just skipped two pages. Even though it feels nice and the transitions between the home screens are pretty smooth, it does sometimes skip a page, which is not supposed to do. Now I'd say it's definitely much better than the Bridge Pro Plus, because if you've seen that review, it is just totally messed up. I wouldn't recommend that trackpad experience to anybody. And the worst part about that keyboard case was that when you're scrolling like on a website, Facebook, whatever, it would be very choppy, it wouldn't be smooth. Now the benefit with the Logitech is that it's perfectly smooth. Perfectly smooth scrolling, you can adjust the speed, you can scroll slowly, quickly, it's really nice because Logitech is working closely with Apple to get the APIs and they're using the smart connector, so you get a really, really nice experience. And of course, the Magic Keyboard, you get the same, same thing. And even though this trackpad is not as tall, I find that it's still perfect. I don't find myself hitting the limits and having it mess with my experience scrolling. Now, probably the number one benefit for both of these keyboard cases is support for three finger gestures. So 
You can swipe left and right to switch between apps or pages. So it works on both of them. And I guess sometimes it doesn't work perfectly. I think it definitely works a little bit better on the Magic Keyboard case. So three fingers to swipe up. Let me try that, there you go. To hit the home screen. And you can swipe between apps, just like that. And you could also pinch to zoom into photos on both of these, which is nice, which you don't get on other keyboard cases like the Bridge Pro Plus. So based on all of that, the trackpad on the Magic Keyboard case is definitely the winner, especially for that better clicking feel, even clicking all the way around compared to the diving board design, but it this is definitely a lot better than other trackpads. Now there is one final feature with the Magic Keyboard case that is totally unique. I've never seen this before on any other keyboard case, and let's get right into it. I have my charging cable right here, so with the Logitech, you simply plug it in, there you go, you're charging. But with the Magic Keyboard case, you could either plug it in in the iPad Pro itself, or in the hinge, you actually get a built-in, let me lift this up for you guys, built-in power connector in the hinge. Now, that is why I think Apple had to be very conservative with the keyboard, not adding the top row function keys because they actually have a motherboard that has to handle the power going in through the hinge and connecting through the smart connector and powering and charging the iPad Pro. Now what I really like about this is that the power cable is kind of out of the way. It's back behind the iPad Pro, it's kind of hidden. So it doesn't really get in your way like it would be if it's plugged straight into the iPad Pro. Now the biggest benefit is that while you have your charging cable charging your iPad Pro, you can actually connect a storage drive, whatever you want to connect into the iPad Pro, right into its original port, and you could be charging and using storage at the same time, which is totally unique. And to some people, this feature alone is worth the extra price over the Logitech. All right, so after testing and comparing all those things, I think I'm ready to give my purchasing recommendation for you guys now. For a lot of you guys, the price is gonna be the deciding factor. Obviously, $160 over $300. A lot of people are just gonna go for the Logitech just because of that price and the fact that you get a really good experience with that smart connector. And of course, you get a couple of things that you just can't get with the Magic Keyboard. First of all, the top row of function keys, which is very important to a lot of people, and you get the side protection of the iPad Pro, so that matters a lot. And if that matters to you, that's probably the better choice just to go with the Logitech. Now, what if you could actually go either way and price isn't that big of a deal for you and you're just trying to figure out which one you should buy? Well, the Magic Keyboard has a lot of advantages over the Logitech. Like, first of all, it is incredibly solid. This keyboard portion, super solid. Like, there's no give at all. The hinge is just, I mean, this is a perfect hinge. Just the way it snaps, excellent compared to the Logitech where like you have this flap in the back. It's not really that good for lap ability, for using on your lap. This keyboard section, it's kind of flimsy and just not as good build quality with the Logitech. The keyboard is better. The trackpad is much, much better on the Magic Keyboard case. The swiping, the scrolling, the gestures work better on the Magic Keyboard case, even though the Logitech also has the smart connector. The Magic Keyboard is lighter, it's definitely thinner, it's more portable, it's more convenient. But I'd say one of the more important things with the Magic Keyboard is the way it makes you feel. Having this unique floating design with the iPad being up here and just being able to lift the iPad off and use it for drawing or for whatever in vertical mode and then putting it back on, this is just a very modern feeling keyboard case compared to the Logitech. It basically looks like every other keyboard case that's out there. Of course, you have the keyboard and the trackpad, but the way it feels is basically like a legacy device. Yes, it does give you excellent protection of your iPad Pro, but when it's closed like this, your modern, awesome-feeling iPad Pro just gets covered up by this old legacy-style keyboard case, and that premium feel kind of goes away compared to with the Magic Keyboard, you have your whole iPad Pro exposed, which is of course dangerous, but if you're the kind of person that likes to have a naked iPhone, no case, you just like the premium feel, you're definitely gonna like the Magic Keyboard case many, many times better than 
the Logitech. And I'd say for professional users, just having the extra USB-C port that allows you to charge while you're plugging in your hard drives, your flash drives, whatever, doing your work, if you're doing video editing, photo editing, that feature alone is a huge hit for anybody doing productivity work, especially if we do actually get Final Cut Pro and other apps from the Mac coming to the iPad. Now, if you're the type of person that's more budget-minded, of course, 160 bucks, that's a much better deal than the Magic Keyboard, and you get the protection all the way around. You have the little flap for the Apple Pencil so it doesn't get lost. So if you're the type of person that likes to go on Amazon and order a nice bulky safe case for your iPhone, you're definitely the type of person who is gonna prefer the Logitech, especially since you're saving all that money. But if you wanna have the best experience and the best feel, I definitely recommend the Magic Keyboard case because using it, it just makes you feel so much better. I can't really explain it, but it feels like a premium, high quality MacBook when you're using this. It's just so solid, everything works great, the hinge, everything. It just feels so different when you're using the Magic Keyboard case compared to the Logitech. Now, if that's something that's very important to you, then I would definitely recommend spending the extra cash on the Magic Keyboard case. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. This is Vadim with MaxTech, and if you decide to buy either of these two keyboard cases, I'm gonna have links down in the description below to the best deals on these. And if you wanna check out our Magic Keyboard review, you can find it right up there, and definitely check out our new Apple product merch. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.